Mrs. Riddhi is a 20-year-old female who has been married since two years, and she is expecting a child very soon. Over the course of the last nine months, unfortunately, because of the lack of education, she has never been to a doctor, never had a sonography done, never had any iron folic acid tablets prescribed to her, and she assumes that everything will be fine. Until one day when she gets her labor pains and is rushed to the hospital, where she delivers a baby boy who is slightly underweight through normal vaginal delivery. Everyone is happy. The little bundle of joy is here, and everyone is celebrating. Riddhi is discharged very soon and sent back to her home. Again, everything appears to be absolutely fine, but 26 days later, suddenly she gets the same kind of abdominal pain which she had when she had labor pains. That is in the lower abdomen, which is crampy type of pain. She's also getting scared because at the same time she's bleeding out. Has something gone wrong with her? And then she's rushed to a different hospital where Dr. Sonak is a practicing gynecologist. And after a proper physical examination and radiological investigation, that is ultrasonography, she tells Riddhi something that makes the floor beneath her feet absolutely sick. Dr. Sona tells Riddhi, Riddhi, you have got an extra uterus. And not just that, in that extra uterus, there are two babies which are currently growing a twin life pregnancy in an extra uterus which she did not even know she had. And just 26 days ago, she delivered a healthy baby boy. Welcome to Case Files everyone, I'm Dr. Anuj Pachel, an MBBS intern practicing at GMC Nagpur. In the series Case File, we dive deep into the amazing medical cases all throughout history and understand how complex and wonderful the human body actually is. And in a way, I let you know about the cases which you might not have even heard about. Now let's deep dive into the case of women who had an extra uterus. Vriddhi belonged to a very poor family, like I said, she was the daughter of two manual laborers, so of course, the, the entire condition, the entire childhood she had was spent in poverty. The same can be said about her education, for which she had to drop out of school when she was just in class third to support her family. When she was 18, she was married off to another manual laborer who was also working. Her menstrual history was as such that she attained menarche at the age of around 12, 13, and their cycles were regular, there was no pain, there was no dysmenorrhea, everything was appearing to be normal and therefore they never bothered going to a doctor. Finally, when she got pregnant, over the course of the nine months, she ignored everything. She did not even go to an antenatal checkup clinic even once. According to the Indian system, if a woman gets pregnant, she has to undergo some sort of test. She absolutely must undergo sonographies as well as regular checkups by different doctors. The reason is we have to make sure as doctors that the baby is fine, the mother is fine and the passage is fine. At least four to five sonographies are recommended and at least four to five times visits are recommended during the course of the pregnancy. The course of the pregnancy is called as the antenatal period and the care that we provide during that period is called as ANC, antenatal care. Finally, when it was around roughly the end of the eighth month of her pregnancy, she got the labor pains. The labor pain happens when the baby is about to get delivered and they are located in the lower abdomen are crampy in nature. She was rushed to the hospital where she underwent a normal vaginal delivery and nobody even suspected a thing. And then the labor pain started 26 days ago where she was brought to our casual. Mrs. Riddhi, 20 year old female married since two years who gave birth to a healthy boy 26 days ago presents to our hospital with the chief complaints of severe lower abdominal pain. She was apparently alright 7 hours ago when she started noticing a pain which was gradually progressive and present over the lower abdomen. The pain was not radiating and the, and the character was crampy. There are no previous history of ectopic pregnancies or miscarriages and the menstrual history is that she attained menarche at the age of 12 regular periods without any complications. No significant family history or socioeconomic history. The general examination was pretty much unremarkable. On doing the pelvic examination, the external genitalia appears to be entirely normal. But there were no signs of trauma or any lesions. When vaginal examination was done, it was the cervix particularly was dilated and on palpating the uterus, the size of the uterus was consistent with 28 weeks of gestation. On doing a transvaginal ultrasound, two separate uterine cavities were visualized. One of these uteri showed a twin pregnancy with fetal heartbeats which were detected. The other uterus was empty and non-pregnant. Emergency cesarean section was opted for the removal of the live twins. The most amazing part is that the twins were actually pretty healthy. They had no signs of respiratory distress or any other congenital abnormalities. They were kept for observation in the neonatal ICU but then soon discharged and given to the mother. Riddhi who was 20 year old and 9 months ago did not even expect anything like that. She was expecting just one child. Now had one child which was born earlier and two separate children who were born later, just 26 days apart. The twins were heterozygous. One was a boy and one was a girl. And currently, all the three children are healthy and are happy with their mother. Now, let me exactly tell you how can a person have two uteruses. This condition is known as uterine diadelphus. Before I tell you exactly what uterine diadelphus is, let me just basically tell you how the female genital tract develops. When there is a female fetus, there are two cords which are present and these are called as mullerian ducts. Now, these mullerian ducts, one, or one of right side and one of left side are present and what happens gradually is that they start to mature and they fuse. When they fuse together, it forms the female genital tract. The right side of the mullerian duct and the left 
side of melindra from the right and the left side of the uterus the same with the cervix and the upper part of the vagina the fallopian tubes are developed as out pouchings from the mullerian duct right from the fallopian tube up till the upper part of vagina everything is just mullerian duct now imagine imagine something wrong happens over here and the mullerian ducts for some reason instead of fusing together and and forming one single uterus do not fuse what you will get you will get two separate uterus and at some times the uterus diadelphus is so severe that even the cervix is two in number and the upper part of the vagina is two in number and sometimes it can be so mild that only a septum might be present in the uterus so this was the basics of how anatomy and development occurs in the female genital tract it is very complex controlled by so many different hormones and chemicals and messengers the ovaries are formed separately from the genital ridge which is a very different topic in general so you might be wondering what happens to these mullerian ducts in males so in males the testes secrete a hormone which inhibits the development of the mullerian duct so no female organs are developed in males simultaneously the external genitalia of the female that is the vulva is developed due to the presence of estrogen now let's talk about how can the person and have a twin pregnancy in one uterus and a single pregnancy in another uterus for that she must have ovulated 3 eggs one from one single ovary and two eggs from the other ovary but these must have made their way into their own uteruses and must have been fertilized by three different sperms at three different times this caused three pregnancies at the same time one in one single uterus and two in the other one which was behind nine months passed away no investigations done so nobody knew that this was happening finally when she got the labor pains it was the first uterus with just one life single pregnancy of that young baby boy which was the one which was delivered normally and since it was a hospital which was located in a very rural setting they did not even do any proper investigations to find out if there is any sort of things which is remaining and 26 days later it was the other uterus which started having labor pains and this labor pain was then explored surgically and in an emergency cesarean section this particular uterine diadelphus uterus was recognized and opened up to find out there are two babies inside took them out and delivered them so the basic question arises is that what is the incidence of all of this happening the incidence of this exact case was 1 in 5 million so it is extremely extremely rare case and uterus diadelphus is one of the most rare type of congenital uterine anomalies that can be present it can be symptomatic or it can be asymptomatic asymptomatic as in this case where she had absolutely no symptoms all throughout her life and in cases if she does have any symptoms it could be related to fertility where the conception would not be proper or if the conception would happen there can be recurrent abortions and for that definitely all females do get investigated she also might suffer from endometriosis a disease where endometrium is present in places where it should not be there can also be there can also be dysmenorrhea that is painful menstruation and of course there is an increased risk for go for a cesarean section so what do we conclude from this entire story that life is magical and life will find a way no matter what the other thing which you conclude is that antenatal care is absolutely important and it should not be taken for granted obs and gynae is one of the most interesting subjects out there that deals with life of mother and children and there are several cases like this which can be challenging yet exciting at the same time thank you so much for watching case files episode 4 if you did enjoy it please make sure to comment down below i loved case files episode 4 waiting for new ones and i'll keep them coming if you haven't subscribed already please consider doing so because i bring you informative and amazing videos such as this one and i promise to always add value to your life thank you so much it's a boy anuj i'll catch you in the next one goodbye